We have all waited over 19 years for this news. A nearly 20 year old Sarasota murder case is solved. Tonight we find out more about the accused killer and what he's been doing for the last two decades. Plus an update on a bomb threat to a local Walmart that had to be evacuated for three hours. And new details on the future of Bradenton's Riverwalk. Your Suncoast News starts now. You're watching ABC 7 News at 11. Good evening. First tonight, an update on a bomb threat at a local Walmart today. Our crews were on scene moments after an employee at that store got a phone call from an unknown man who said there was a bomb in the building. The caller warned people should evacuate the store on Lockwood Ridge and University Parkway. Walmart staff called the sheriff's office and evacuated customers and employees. The sheriff's office says that after a thorough search of the store, nothing suspicious was found. About three hours after the evacuation, Walmart resumed normal business operations. Another top story we're following today, an arrest made in a murder case from almost 20 years ago. 47-year-old Deborah Dalzell was sexually battered, beaten and murdered in her own home nearly 20 years ago. Now new DNA technology led deputies to the man 39-year-old Luke Fleming. Fleming is charged with Dalzell's murder and was arrested on Sunday night in Ellington. According to the Sarasota County Sheriff's Office, back in 1999, Fleming was 20 years old when he jumped over a six-foot wall, cut a hole in Dalzell's screened-in porch, then, beatily, then brutally beat, sexually battered, and strangled her. We never gave up hope. Our hearts are filled with gratitude. We are forever grateful. At the time of Dalzell's death, Fleming lived within walking distance of her home. Now, deputies gave us a little bit more information about that accused murderer who's been living among us undetected for nearly 20 years. Before he moved to St. Petersburg last year, 39-year-old Luke Fleming lived in Palmetto. Deputies say he was originally from Brooklyn, New York, but moved to Sarasota in 1991. He went to area schools until graduating from Riverview High School in 1997. We knocked on several doors today trying to find his family. Our search led us to the home that he lived in less than one mile from the victim back in 1999. His brother answered the door but did not want to comment. In other news tonight, an update on a missing canine out of Manatee County. The sheriff's office says they have says boss has been found and is OK. A resident along County Road 675 spotted boss at around 545 this afternoon and called the sheriff's office. The sheriff's office says the dog ran into the woods this morning near Foxbrook communities off 675 in Parrish. Boss was in the middle of his morning routine when he got distracted and then took off. He's been taken to the vet and appears to be in good health. Deputies say he'll be back on the job in no time. Well, plans are moving ahead with expanding Bradenton's Riverwalk. A first draft of the master plan that would extend the popular Riverwalk to the east is now complete. That's where we find ABC 7's Rick Adams live with the latest on these plans. Rick. Yeah, Jacqueline, good evening. This is really a beautiful place here. There are now plans to make it even more beautiful. The transformation of a mile stretch from Manatee Memorial Hospital in Bradenton to the east is another step closer to becoming reality. The first draft of a master plan is now in place. The Riverwalk expansion would begin at 9th Street East and Riverside Drive East and run to 14th Street East. The master plan shows the expansion of Riverwalk with a focus on passive recreation. Things like walking, um, places to sit, gather small gatherings. The plan also focuses on public art and the history of the area and it will be much different than the current Riverwalk. Realize Bradenton has been taking public input on the project for several months. Kimberly Horn, the company awarded the contract, has taken all of that input to create this master plan for the Riverwalk expansion. Brian Zoller's home sits on the Manatee River right where this expansion would take place. I think it's good. Any improvements to the area, especially along the waterfront, are 
uh, welcomed and uh, excited about it. Although he's all for this expansion, Zoller has concerns over the drainage, but he's confident that issue will be addressed and taken care of. Concerns for some other residents include traffic and the park that's part of this plan possibly bringing in the wrong kind of crowd. Zoller says he's happy that he and other neighbors have been involved in this planning process. It's right in front of my front door, so uh, if I can put in my two cents and uh, helpfully make the project a little bit better, then that's what I plan to do. And this will eventually have to go in front of city commissioners for approval. It's not yet known exactly when that will take place. Reporting live from Bradenton this evening, I'm Rick Adams. Jacqueline, back to you. Okay, Rick, thank you. Well, let's check in now with Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan for a look at what you can expect when you wake up tomorrow morning, Bob. Well, right now it's pretty nice out there, Jacqueline. 77 degrees. We had some uh, rain-cooled air move in across the Sun Coast as the West Coast sea breeze broke down. Winds are calm right now. Not much wind out there at all. And the pressure's on the rise, 30 inches even. And it looks as though we're going to see high pressure dominate our weather for the upcoming days. It is going to build over the eastern seaboard, and that means we're going to see more of an easterly wind flow over the upcoming days. Boy, some big storms inland. That has cooled us down to our pretty much low temperature for the overnight reading. Uh, not much left out there now. Some showers down to our south near Naples and Fort Myers. Nothing really going on here at this point. We could see one or two lone showers off in the Gulf, but uh, some of the rain came heavy at times, especially uh, right near Oneco, stretching off toward Lakewood Ranch and then down south. Uh, near Inglewood, but notice uh, Northport not getting much rainfall. Siesta Key pretty dry all the way Longbow Key too. Uh, not much rainfall. And that's the result of the drier air that's in place in the mid levels of the atmosphere. This is going to thin out though, I think uh, on Thursday and more so on Friday, giving us a better chance for some late day storms. Well, more on that coming up in a few minutes. Jacqueline. All right, Bob, we'll talk to you then. Thank you. Venice police are looking for a man accused of stealing a Yeti cooler. Take a look at the surveillance, these surveillance photos. Police are calling him Mr. Steal Your Yeti. The man is accused of stealing the cooler from a local business and then driving away with it. Now, Yeti coolers are valued at up to $400. Well, it took eight years, but a man is now in custody for allegedly stealing a half million dollar boat in Charlotte County. The Charlotte Sun reports Giovanni Valadares Ramirez was arrested in Texas and then brought to Charlotte County. He's accused of stealing a $550,000 boat from Punta Gorda and taking it to Cuba in 2010. A student on his way to school this morning now fighting for his life after a shooting in Jacksonville. Deputies are investigating the drive-by shooting. They say the student was shot once in the chest. He was able to make it to his bus stop and the bus driver drove him to a nearby fire station. He is in critical condition and deputies are questioning the students that were on the bus. Two of them say they saw it happen. A woman who says a lifeguard ran her over on the beach is getting her moment in court. Tears ran down the face of 49 year old Rinda Mazel as she remembered lying on Fort Lauderdale Beach six years ago when she was run over by a lifeguard SUV. Witnesses also testifying on the stand to seeing her trapped underneath that truck. We bend down, we can see her pinned underneath the truck. I don't think she can move. North Carolina teacher filed suit against the city of Fort Lauderdale in 2013. She is seeking damages in excess of $15,000, claiming the city of Fort Lauderdale was negligent. Mazel's case will be back in court tomorrow. Tonight, the Democratic nominee in Florida's 16th Congressional District is issuing a public apology. A media outlet recently reported that David Shapiro's son, Adam Shapiro, made several offensive comments on his social media accounts about eight years ago. David Shapiro has sent a statement condemning his son's past behavior. Meanwhile, Adam Shapiro also issued an apology and stated that he will no longer play a role in his father's race. Shapiro is challenging Republican incumbent Vern Buchanan for that seat in Congress. If you'd like to read the full statements, you can head over to our website at mysuncoast.com and look for this story. A lack of consistency among Florida's 67 counties has led to the number of rejected vote by mail ballots to vary greatly across the state. Today, the American Civil Liberties Union of Florida released a new study which shows the absentee ballots of young voters and racial minorities are more likely to be rejected compared to other groups. The ACLU does not know why certain groups are rejected more often. Ballots are often flagged for missing or mismatched signatures. 
The ACLU report says the procedures to inform voters about rejected ballots and ways to fix them also vary from county to county. Whether your vote counts or not should not depend on your zip code. It should not depend on the county that, uh, that you live in. Uh, so we need more uniform standards. The Florida State Association of Supervisors of Elections disputes some of those findings of the report, pointing to a 2016 federal court ruling that directs supervisors to contact people whose signatures may have been rejected. Before that court ruling, such a service was only considered optional. New resources in the fight against the opioid epidemic. Today, the U.S. Department of Health announcing Florida will receive over $61 million to help with opioid addiction. The majority of that money will go, will go toward medication-assisted treatment and prevention. The rest of it will be used to help community health centers, academic institutions, and rural organizations expand access to substance abuse and mental health services. Well, this month is Hispanic Heritage Month, and three Florida students will have the opportunity to earn a four-year Florida prepaid scholarship. The art and essay contest will be featured around the theme, A Celebration of Innovative Hispanic American Leaders. All entries must be received no later than October 15th. Stay with us. Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan will be back with your first alert forecast. Plus, how new funding is going to help some Florida fish species recover from red tide and new images of the damage in the Carolinas after Florence. About every three minutes in America, someone is diagnosed with a blood cancer. Light the Night brings together survivors and supporters to bring light to the darkness of cancer and to help fund life-saving research. Our goal is a world without blood cancers, and we're lighting the path to cures. The discoveries made in blood cancer research have led to breakthrough treatments for many cancers and other serious diseases. Help defeat the darkness of cancer. Join Light the Night today. Since 1972, Sleep King has provided quality mattresses and accessories at the best discounted prices available. Top brands like Simmons, Sealy, Serta, Beautyrest, iComfort, and more. With available free delivery, free financing, and free setup and removal. For a comfortable night's sleep with same day delivery, even if we have to carry it on our backs. Trust Sleep King of Sarasota. Buy it today, sleep on it tonight. Today, everyone is looking for more fashionable choices in flooring than ever before. And G. Freed has responded with a huge selection of carpets, tile, wood, laminate, and vinyl. Installed by a highly skilled team, G. Freed has got everything you're looking for and more. The next time you think about quality flooring, think G. Freed Flooring America. G. Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. Sarasota Oxygen and CPAP is the largest locally owned CPAP supply company in the area. Is it time to replace your old equipment? The staff at Sarasota Oxygen and CPAP can show you the most up-to-date CPAP equipment and supplies to meet your sleep apnea needs, including portable travel devices and the SoClean automatic CPAP sanitizer. We serve all of Southwest Florida, giving the highest quality of care with the finest CPAP equipment. Please visit our website, sarasotacpap.com. Need more space in your place? The More Space Place can help. With Murphy beds that disappear to reveal a home office, living room, or den. Custom closets with designated areas for your shoes, bags, wardrobe, and accessories. Custom built entertainment centers, garage storage systems, and more. The More Space Place has three showrooms next to Sunny's on US 41 South in Sarasota, on Lakewood Ranch Boulevard just south of State Route 64 in Bradenton, and on Tamiami Trail next to Panera Bread in Port Charlotte. Put more space in your place at the More Space Place. Check out My Sun Coast Dining on MySunCoast.com, your guide to the foodie lifestyle. ABC7's own Chef Judy serves up her favorite recipes, cooking tips and trends, dining blogs, step-by-step -step videos, and Sun Coast Restaurant Guide. You'll find it all at MySunCoast.com slash dining. Download the all-new ABC7 First Alert weather app now.
Dead fish continue to wash ashore along many Suncoast beaches. On top of this being an environmental emergency, the population of one of the most important species on the Suncoast might have dropped significantly. In hopes of bringing those numbers back, the FWC is directing $1.2 million for research and production of redfish. FWC's Stock Enhancement Research Facility in Port Manatee will now have additional equipment and supplies to be able to spawn and raise more redfish to be let out into the Gulf as soon as the waters are safe to do so. Well, at this point, we're ready to transition from a research-oriented focus to a production-oriented focus. So the money that was uh, given to FWC will expand the production capacity by about 600 percent for redfish. FWC plans on releasing the artificial restock of the popular game fish as early as next April. And of course, Bob, we want that red tide to be out of here. Yeah, not can, just, yeah, so. not for the fish, for the people and the visitors yeah. and uh, losing a lot of money out there. Sure, oh, cancellations know, and all sorts of stuff. Those uh, were snook there you're watching. We're talking redfish, but snook are also off the uh, off limits right mm -hmm. now. You can't you can't get redfish or, or snook or keep them. Um, today is... National Pirate Talk Like a Pirate Day. <laughs> Arg me hearties! It's uh, nice out there, and I'm sure the pirates would be pretty upset with this red tide. It's, um, it's still pretty thick. Getting the unofficial tally right now for my Facebook live shot and uh, suggesting that the red tide hasn't been that bad. Some Fred Seeger was out of Siesta Key, uh, Dave Beachy out there by the bay, and some folks uh, out on uh, Longbow Key also saying it wasn't as bad, but uh, it's still out there. Get a look at this shot. Great a rainbow, and it's going right into the hole. Hole in one. This is Paul Mayer, the second hole in the Champions course, I believe, that John Brown sending that in. You don't see that very often. And then uh, this is Val, Val Vasilescu, and this is a beautiful frame shot there with the palm trees. I wish the air smelled as good with this red tide around. And Matthew Smith uh, getting a nice calm shot with hardly anyone on the beach there as the sun was setting. And this was the moon to the right. Uh, Smitty's weather shot right there with the cumulus clouds towering off into the sky. Most of the rain uh, came early in the afternoon near the coast. It was spotty and then most of it came inland later on in the day. This is the uh, red tide report. Satellite imagery showing that red area. That's the red tide. You can see it's uh, quite widespread off the coast of Lee County and in the bay there. Uh, not as much in Sarasota, but still higher concentration. Notice in Manatee, there's a little gap right there. Uh, so things have uh, calmed down a little bit there, but still people are reporting uh, when you get that west wind, that's when the impacts really hit home. And the uh, high concentrations are still there in Manatee, Sarasota counties as well. And there have been fish uh, kills reported uh, this day. This is the land area you see right there. A pilot flying around uh, sent this photo in, and you can see the areas of red tide, that brownish water. Uh, moving on in and appreciate those photos. Keep them coming. Well, the rainfall uh, was uh, pretty heavy into Wachula near there and uh, in northern portions of Hardy County, also into Manatee County earlier, uh, but that uh, was sporadic. It wasn't around everywhere and some of the showers made it to the coast. There's still some lingering out there in the Gulf down near Naples and off the coast of Marco Island. Some drier air in place that's starting to thin out a little bit. Boy, there was a lot of dry air east of the state yesterday. That has since moved on. I think things will start to moisten up and we'll have a better chance for those showers and storms, but it's not going to be an all day rain. We'll see scattered storms in the late afternoon and evening, and it looks like they will be a little closer to the coast as that West Coast sea breeze won't have much chance of getting inland due uh, to the stronger easterly wind around the area of high pressure over the southeast. Now you'll see uh, as the sea breeze develops a chance for a few showers, but watch when the east coast meets up. You'll get a little bit more reds showing up there, so more storms expected. And that'll continue on Thursday and Friday. Same story, so drop off for the kids. Your commute in the morning should be okay. The afternoon pickup could be a few showers around. Better chances uh, late in the afternoon and in through the early evening. Now, as far as the uh, tropics go, things have calmed down a little bit. We are watching this little spin right there. The National Hurricane Center giving it a 40% chance developing over the next several days. And an area just kind of popping up east of the Lesser Antilles, only a 20% chance over the next five days. We still have two months and a couple of weeks really before the official end of the hurricane season. The next name, Kirk, Leslie, and then followed by Michael. Typically, there are about five more storms from this time forward until uh, the end of the season, which is November 30th. And October, a pretty significant month there. 17 named storms uh, typically come out. Temperatures now mid to upper 70s across the region. Uh, we're expecting lows to be pretty much right where they are. Current conditions, 77 right now and uh, looks to be pretty good for us tomorrow, albeit warm. We're uh, entering into the last days of summer, 
and we'll see uh, heat indices up near 100 to 104 tomorrow. Northeast winds turn to the northwest at 5 to 10 knots. A light chop out there on the bays and inland waters. The extended forecast then look for those afternoon summer thunderstorms to continue right through the next seven days as we head into fall over the weekend. Jacqueline. All right, Bob, thank you. President Trump back in the nation's capital tonight after spending much of the days in the Carolinas visiting people impacted by Hurricane Florence and its aftermath. ABC's Marcy Gonzalez is in Wilmington with the latest on his visit and the ongoing flooding crisis. President Trump handing out hot meals and hugs. <laughs> Getting a first-hand look at the devastation left following Hurricane Florence. Beginning in hard-hit New Bern, North Carolina, the president thanking first responders and volunteer rescuers who have saved more than 4,000 people from floodwaters throughout the state. In moments of despair, we witness the true character of the American people. So true. Citizens all across our country rally together to rescue the stranded, to protect the innocent and to restore hope to families who have experienced tremendous and unbearable loss. The president then visiting with residents in Conway, South Carolina. Is everybody okay? After facing criticism following Hurricane Maria, the president here describing Florence as one of the most powerful storms to ever hit the country, promising quick and lasting federal assistance. The recovery efforts just beginning. Neighborhoods and hundreds of roadways still underwater, rescues ongoing, and the governor of South Carolina saying the worst flooding is yet to come. And here in North Carolina, some rivers still have not crested, and the levels of some that have, including this one, aren't expected to start receding for days. Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News, Wilmington, North Carolina. Well, flooding from Florence is also claiming the lives of millions of animals across the area. More than 3 million chickens and turkeys and 5,500 hogs have been killed as rising North Carolina rivers swamped farm buildings where those animals were being raised for market. North Carolina agriculture officials issued those numbers yesterday. 16 rivers were at major flood stage with an additional three forecasted to peak by Thursday. North Carolina is among the top states in the nation in producing pork and poultry with about 9 million hogs at, at any given time and 819 million chickens and 34 million turkeys raised each year. Well, a woman is in custody after authorities say she slashed the tires of nearly 100 cars in Los Angeles. Police say the act of vandalism happened Tuesday night into early Wednesday in the Jefferson Park neighborhood of South LA. Authorities say many kinds of cars were targeted, including SUVs, sedans and minivans parked in front of homes. One victim couldn't believe what he saw. Depressing, bro. It was like more than 20 cars out here that got slashed and just I didn't realize until I see more than two people trying to change their tires and I'm like, whoa, I thought it was just me. I just had a flat, but nah. The suspect is being held on a $21,000 bail. It's unclear if any of those acts were caught on surveillance video. In consumer news, by the end of this year, Amazon is expected to be the third biggest ad platform in the country. A report by the research firm eMarketer shows more and more people are starting their product search on Amazon instead of internet search engines. That means Amazon can get major money for advertising on its site. The industry leaders are currently Google and Facebook. They control a combined 58% of the digital ad market. Well, this won't do away with those sometimes awful ID pictures at the DMV, but it could or should be a safer way to celebrate new credentials. Delaware's Department of Transportation launched safe selfie zones in an effort to protect privacy in this today's day and age of digital age. The zones are colorful backdrops at DMV offices. Newly minted license holders can use them to snap a celebratory shot after getting their license. The idea came about when a DMV employee noticed a lot of people snapping pictures of their brand new licenses and then posting those pictures on social media. When we come back, we'll show you who's being rumored to perform at the Super Bowl halftime show this year. But first, here's what's coming up on Jimmy Kimmel. Tonight, I would like that? to think I'd be smart enough not to just blurt out spoilers. Kimmel gets the scoop from Peter Dinklage. But wait, there's more. Plus, the not so insecure Issa Rae. She's great. And music from Ann Wilson. Jimmy Kimmel Live, new tonight on ABC.
It's finished Toyota's monumental model year end clearance. Rates are rising for a limited time, 0%. New Toyota's 8,000 off. With Camrys and Corollas, your choice from 19.9 to 15,000. Shop 24 7 at VenezToyota.com. Did you know you could get life insurance for less than 32 cents a day? With guaranteed acceptance, whole life insurance through TrueStage, you can get up to $25,000 in protection with a single phone call. TrueStage can help free your family from immediate financial stress when you're gone. Utility bills, mortgages, car payments, those are a lot of things that can add up pretty fast. And even if you're on a fixed income, prices fit your budget, starting at less than 32 cents a day. Plus, your price will never increase and your benefit will never decrease. And with no medical tests or health questions, you cannot be turned down for any reason. Call 1-800-842-7189. Now, for a free, no-obligation quote, TrueStage offers plans to fit your budget. Help protect your family from immediate financial burdens after you're gone with guaranteed acceptance whole life insurance through TrueStage. Call 1-800-842-7189 now. Picking out a new ceiling fan? That's a do-it-yourself. Installing your new ceiling fan? No. That's a don't do it yourself. For ceiling fans, rewires, or anything electrical, play it safe. And call on the trained electricians from your locally owned Mr. Sparky. It's no accident that so many of our customers are repeat customers. You. You Trust Mr. Sparky for all your electrical repairs. Gettle's got what you're looking for at Gettle.com. 17 new car brands, over a thousand used vehicles, prices and payments you can afford, credit help if you need it, and they pay cash for your old car. Plus, Gettle Pre-Owned Certified Plus means buying with peace of mind. Need service? Gettle's got that too. Gettle's got it. Visit Gettle.com. Planning a carnival fantasy cruise out of Mobile? Then check out the park and cruise packages at the luxurious Battle House and Renaissance Riverview Plaza Hotels. Stay at the Battle House for $169 per night or the Riverview Plaza for just $149 per night and leave your car for the duration of your cruise. Includes transportation to and from the cruise terminal. If you're cruising out of Mobile, come stay with us. Call 1-800-MARRIOTT or visit Marriott.com now. It's Venice Toyota's monumental model year end clearance. Rates are rising for a limited time, 0%. New Toyota's 8,000 off. Ravs and Highlanders from 26,900 to 2,900. Shop 24 7 at venicetoyota.com. In entertainment news, fans of the singer-songwriter Prince are asking federal authorities to open a grand jury investigation into his death. So far, a petition for that investigation has been signed by over 6,000 people. They believe someone needs to be held responsible for the rock star's accidental fentanyl, accidental fentanyl overdose in 2016. Federal, state, and county investigators have spent nearly two years looking into Prince's death, but were unable to trace the source of the drug that killed him. Prosecutors say there is no credible evidence that will lead to federal criminal charges. Well, Maroon 5 will reportedly perform at this year's Super Bowl halftime show. That big game is February 3rd in Atlanta. Neither the band nor the NFL has confirmed those reports, but the NFL says it is a Super Bowl tradition to speculate, speculate about the performers. An official halftime notice for Super Bowl 53 is expected in November. That's a look at entertainment news. We'll have tonight's winning lotto numbers when we come back. Outdoor living is one of the greatest perks about living in Florida. So whether this is your style or this, or maybe this, Contact Superior Pools. They've been building pools from Sarasota to Naples since 2001, and they would love to build yours. If you think it's hot outside, just wait until you see even hotter savings inside. Only at Rugs as Art Hot Summer Savings Sale event will you find the lowest prices on a vast selection of stunning rugs, furniture accents, and accessories. This special event only happens once a year, so hurry in before the best selections are gone. The hot summer savings event ends soon, so don't miss out on the best prices ever. Rugs as Art, Sarasota's only area rug superstore. Sarasota Oxygen and CPAP is the largest locally owned CPAP supply company in the area. Is it time to replace your old equipment? 
The staff at Sarasota Oxygen and CPAP can show you the most up-to-date CPAP equipment and supplies to meet your sleep apnea needs, including portable travel devices and the SoClean automatic CPAP sanitizer. We serve all of Southwest Florida, giving the highest quality of care with the finest CPAP equipment. Please visit our website, sarasotacpap.com. Excuse me a minute. Hi, Dad. No, don't try to get up. Hi, I'm Julie, a right-at-home caregiver. And if I had been caring for Tom's dad, I would have noticed some dizziness that could lead to balance issues. That's because I'm trained to report any changes in behavior, no matter how small. So Tom could have peace of mind. We'll be right there. We have to go. Hey, Tom, you should try right at home. They're great for us. The right care, right at home. Outdoor living is one of the greatest perks about living in Florida. So whether this is your style, or this, or maybe this, contact Superior Pools. They've been building pools from Sarasota to Naples since 2001, and they would love to build yours. The Florida Lottery winning numbers are sponsored by Frontier Fios. An honest mistake or a clever marketing ploy, one thing is certain, this is a massive typo. Take a look. Kathy Pacific, I think that's how you say it, without the F. You'd think it would be too big to miss, but observers in Hong Kong were quick to spot the error. The airline did reassure that this would not be a long-lived special edition. <laughs> <laughs> Reminds me of the commercial of the Snickers with the, the Kansas City chefs. Oh, yes. I love their Snickers. I, I love that Snickers commercial, yeah. Commercials. <laughs> uh, we are looking at uh, some nice weather to start things off tomorrow, of course. Uh, tune in to uh, meteorologist John Scalzi. Uh, more on that. Should be hot one. High temperatures, low 90s. Heat index up near 103 in the afternoon. Uh, some cooling storms in the afternoon. Though. All right. Good to hear. Thank you so much, Bob. And thanks for joining us tonight. We'll see you right back here tomorrow evening. Have a good one.